In this video, I'm going to talk about computing trigonometric functions on general angles. From the last video, we have learned how to find the trigonometric function values for angles in a right-angled triangle, which means the angle theta is between 0 and pi over 2. In this video, we are going to talk about how to find the trigonometric function values for angles outside this interval. To begin, we put the angle on a unit circle. If the angle is between 0 and pi over 2, then the angle is in the first quadrant. Let's say it is here. If we drop a perpendicular line from this point to the x-axis and also connect this point to the origin, then we get a right-angled triangle, and this angle is exactly the theta that we are studying. Let's denote this point by the coordinate x, y. Then the length of this lick is y, and the length of this lick is x. As for the hypotenuse, because it is actually the radius of the unit circle, the length is 1. From the definition of trigonometric functions on a right angled triangle, we have sine of theta is equal to y over 1, which is just y. Cosine theta is equal to x over 1, which is just x. And tangent theta is equal to y over x. Hence, it is very common to denote this vertex as cosine theta, comma, sine theta instead of x, comma, y because x is cosine theta and y is sine theta. To ensure that we don't mistakenly write sine theta, comma, cosine theta for the coordinates, we should remember that the coordinates follow the alphabetical order, so it is cosine before sine. Using this system, we can define the sine, cosine, and tangent values for any angles. No matter what the size of this angle theta is, draw it on the unit circle. Then we have a coordinate point on the unit circle, and we call it x, y. We would define x as cosine of theta, and define y as sine of theta. As for tangent theta, we will take the ratio between sine and cosine to obtain it. From this definition of sine, cosine, and tangent, we can derive something called the cast rule, which says this quadrant is C, this quadrant is A, this quadrant is S, and this quadrant is T. C-A-S-T spells as cast. Actually, C stands for cosine, A stands for all, S stands for sine, and T stands for tangent. What do they mean? The cast rule indicates which of the three trigonometric functions attain positive values in a certain quadrant. For example, this quadrant that says S means sine is positive, but cosine and tangent are negative. This quadrant that says T means tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are both negative. This quadrant that says all means all of sine, cosine, and tangent are positive. Based on how we define the trigonometric functions using the coordinates on the unit circle, no matter what the size of the angle theta is, we will have to form triangles with the x-axis. This motivates the definition of reference angles. A reference angle refers to an angle that is relative to the x-axis. For example, if this is angle theta, then the reference angle is simply the same angle as itself. If this is angle theta, then this is the corresponding reference angle. Since 
it measures the angle difference from this point to the x-axis. If this is angle theta, then this is the corresponding reference angle, since it measures the angle difference from this point to the x-axis. And if this is angle theta, then this angle is the corresponding reference angle, since it represents the angle difference from here to the x-axis. Let's go over some concrete examples. If theta is equal to 5 pi over 8, then notice that this angle is greater than half pi, but less than pi. We found that 5 pi over 8 is in this quadrant. Hence, the reference angle is found by using pi, subtracting your angle. So we get pi minus 5 pi over 8, which is equal to 3 pi over 8, and this is the reference angle. If my theta is equal to 14 pi over 9, then 14 pi over 9 is 1 and 5 over 9. So this is greater than 3 pi over 2. As a result, this angle is in the fourth quadrant. In order to find the reference angle, we take 2 pi subtracting your angle so that we get this reference angle. 2 pi minus 14 pi over 9 gives us 4 pi over 9. And this is the reference angle. If our theta is equal to 7 pi over 5, then notice that this angle is greater than pi but less than 3 pi over 2. Hence, this angle is in the third quadrant. To find the reference angle, we know that it should be this one, which is your angle subtracting pi. Hence, we have 7 pi over 5 minus pi, which is 2 pi over 5, and it is the reference angle. After knowing how to find the reference angle, we can express the trigonometric function on any angle in terms of an angle between 0 and pi over 2. For example, if we have cosine of 5 pi over 7, then the first step is to find the quadrant that 5 pi over 7 lies in. 5 pi over 7 is greater than pi over 2 but less than pi so it is in the second quadrant. Next, we would like to find out whether this cosine value is positive or negative using the cast rule. Since this angle is in the second quadrant, we know that cosine is negative because this is an S quadrant. Hence, this is equal to negative of cosine of some angle. But what is that angle? We can find that by using the reference angle. The reference angle of 5 pi over 7 is given by this angle, which is pi minus your 5 pi over 7. And simplifying that, we have cosine of 2 pi over 7. And we are done. We have successfully expressed the cosine value of this angle as a cosine of an angle between 0 and pi over 2. Let's see some more examples. If we have tangent of 7 pi over 6, then first, 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant because it is bigger than pi but less than pi over 2. Next, we found that this value is positive by the cast rule because this quadrant is the t quadrant. Hence, we have this value equal to tangent of an angle. And that angle is the reference angle. Since our 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant, we would like to find the reference angle in this way. 7 pi over 6 minus pi. 
And simplifying that, we have tangent of pi over 6. Because we know that this value is root 3 over 3, we actually solve the value of tangent 7 pi over 6 completely. What about sine of 5 pi over 3? The angle 5 pi over 3 lies in the fourth quadrant because it is greater than 3 pi over 2 but less than 2 pi. Hence, by the cast rule, we know that sine would be negative. So we have sine 5 pi over 3 equals the negative of sine of an angle. And how do we find the reference angle? Because 5 pi over 3 is in the fourth quadrant, this is the reference angle. And to obtain that, we use 2 pi to subtract 5 pi over 3. And after simplifying it, we have negative of sine pi over 3. Because sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, the final answer is negative of root 3 over 2 for the value of sine 5 pi over 3. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe to our channel and we will learn more fun math together. Thank you.